Tales of the Rays is a mobile phone game released in July of 2017 where you can watch all your favorite Tales of Waifus and all your favorite Tales of Husbandos from all your favorite Tales of video games interacting together in cute little coffee shop fanfiction-esque scenarios. And also maybe like save the world or something, I guess. If you live outside Japan and have only played Tales of Symphonia like some normie, then you may be inclined to think, well, I don't have that many Tales of Waifus, so why should I play this game? You'd be in the same boat as pretty much everyone else in the civilized world, which is probably why they're shutting down the global version of Tales of the Rays on May 29th. That's right, it's been in service for less than a year. Tales of the Rays was marketed, at least in the West, as a console-quality RPG for the mobile phone. And it was that, to an extent. Graphically, it looked more or less like Tales of the Abyss did in 2006, and gameplay-wise, it ticked all the boxes for what you'd want from a Tales of combat system if boiled down to the barest bones. You got your basic attacks, you got your slightly magical attacks called arts, you got your more magical attacks, which in this game are called mirages, and they're freaking cool, and they've got the animes, and they've got all the cool stuff. They're great, you want to do mirages all the time. Just kidding, you want to save up your mirages until the end of each level and use them all on the boss. That's just how it is, I'm sorry. The gameplay in Tales of the Rays is incredibly episodic, centered around highly simplified levels where you go through the level, fight exactly three enemies or three groups of enemies. You have three enemy encounters, including one boss encounter, and you open between two or three treasure chests precisely depending on how far you are in the game's storyline. Combat is simple tap and slash sort of thing. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I won. I won. The environments are very uninspired. By and large, most of the levels are incredibly easy to navigate. There's a function which lets you go through the level and fight all the enemies all on autopilot. You don't even have to tap tap slash slash. You can just go through it and do it. Usually it won't open all the treasure chests, so that's a bad idea, but I mean, you, you can do it. It's simple enough. The machine can do it, except sometimes there's levels where you have to climb up trees and it's really bullshit and hard to determine which trees you can climb up and which trees you can't because they look exactly the same. Level design falls into one of two categories. Either it's obtusely simple, you run down a straight line basically with little offshoots where you can either find a dead end or find one treasure chest and at the end of the straight line you reach a boss basically or they're so labyrinthine as to be incomprehensible because every point in each level looks the same there's very little variation in level design or in enemy design, with a few rare exceptions. Some environments look cool, but also very homogenous throughout the level. There is nothing to tell you which part of the level is the beginning and which part of the level is the end. It's very easy to backtrack and not realize that you have backtracked in some of the levels. But in the other levels, it is literally a straight shot beginning to end, and there is no in-between. There is no medium difficulty levels in this game. The real takeaway, the real the real draw, the real highlight of Tales of the Rays is the skits, is the character interaction, is the bits where you have a cute little anime cutout of your waifu having a cute little anime discussion about planning a Halloween festival with another cute Tales character and it's really and it's really sweet and they they eat sweets together and they do each other's hair and it, and and sometimes they sometimes they fight sometimes they they got to save the world and fight bad guys but sometimes they just bake cookies together and that's what we're all really here for we want to see Ruti bake cookies with Colette the writing is by and away very good the skits aren't voiced however the battles are voiced which is very nice the voice acting in the ba in the battles is I don't think they used all the original vo voice actors, but everyone sounds more or less on point except Senel. Maybe they used Senel's original Japanese voice actor. It's the first time I've heard his voice in Japanese, and it was very, very startling. Nah, 
you can still play Tales of Rays in Japanese, and as far as I know, you don't have to do any strange things to convince your phone that you are in fact in Japan. Again, as far as I know. But the issue with that is that unless you read Japanese, the draw of the game really is the character skits. It really is the character interaction. There is not much fun to be had in the battle system, which is the only other component of the game. Well, that's not true. There are three real components. There's going through the levels and doing battles, that's one. There's character skits, that's two. And then there's all the, like, gotcha and system maintaining, um, like, menu interaction stuff. That's three. So, no one, I mean, maybe someone is playing for the gotcha element. I mean, you would to get cool new characters, obviously, but most of the time you don't get cool new characters. Most of the time it's to get weapons for your cool characters. And eventually, maybe this is just because I've been playing events for two weeks straight, but eventually you have so many cool weapons for all your cool characters that you're like, I have to, what am I going to do with all these cool weapons? I'm practically drowning in magic discs. Um, I don't think anyone's playing for the battle system, and I think very few people are playing primarily for the gotcha system. I think people are playing primarily for the character interactions. And unless you speak Japanese, that element or read Japanese very fluently. It's not you can't. It, you, it's not an auditory experience. It's a. It's a. It's a visual experience. You're reading. You're reading the text. Unless you can read Japanese, that the the whole the whole point is lost. So it, it's lost on me. I certainly can't read Japanese at that level. In theory, this game is a gotcha game. Although the gotcha element is highly hidden. Like I never felt motivated. There were very few instances in which I felt motivated to purchase money through the game. The only way that this game was ever monetized, at least as far as I can tell, is that you could purchase Mirror Gems, which were one of the game's four basic currencies, and there are more types of currencies depending on whether or not there is an event going on at the time, and since I've only been playing since the game has been shutting down, there's events going on all the fucking time. We're in the middle of a Christmas event, and last week there was a Halloween event. They're giving us all the events, but I never really felt like I was running out of money, so I never really felt compelled to purchase Mirror Gems. The only instance where I would have is you can run out of AP, action points, anime porn, availability points. You can run out of AP, which will stop you from playing until your AP recharges. And you can buy AP with Mirror Gems, but as far as I can tell, you were never able to purchase AP directly, which seems like the sensible thing. Because if I run out of AP, my first thought is I want more of this, not I'm going to go like buy currency to buy more of this. It's just I want more of the thing. So I was more inclined to just wait rather than purchase it, even if I could have purchased it. By the way, Ray's team, I would love to give you $20. I fully intended to purchase $20 of whatever, but you can't right now. They just turned it off. You can't give them any more money. It's over. They don't want money anymore, and that's why they're shutting it down, because their interface was not ever set up. It wasn't gotcha e enough. It was like the opposite of what people complain about for gotcha games, which is to say, instead of needing to give them money every 30 seconds, you never need to give them money, so why would you? Again, I've only played since you haven't been able to pay them money. Really? I played for like two hours back when you could pay money, and two hours isn't enough time to run out of AP and give them money. That's the problem. If you ran out in like half an hour, that would be a fair amount of playtime. And also, it, it, like, it's not, it's not a situation where you would play for five minutes and then run out. You could literally play for hours and, and, and be pretty good. Like, as long, like, if the reason that Global Rays is shutting down is because of a lack of funds, I get it, man. They didn't try hard enough to take our money, which is, which is 
I mean, not really a shame, good on them, but unfortunately it means that we're not going to be able to play the game in uh, six days from the time that I'm recording this. And it was a very fun game. I was very into it. I'm, I'm sorry. This game is how I met my husband, Kong Wai. Wow. 